Hey, it's Mike. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm in an unusual spot right now, and I haven't posted a video all week. It has been a bad week. We uh, had a leak in our basement and spent a long time trying to figure out where the leak was coming from, days, only to find out that uh, we have a crack in our foundation. So um, that's a problem, obviously, and it's destroyed our basement, so I can't sit at my desk anymore. And um, so I am just throwing up this quick video of some weird, funny to me, entertaining to me, things that I see on Facebook Marketplace uh, when it pertains to advertising baseball cards, as well as a couple of Craigslist items in here as well. So hope you enjoy this. If you're into baseball card videos, I usually do two to three of these a week. Click that subscribe button and uh, the bell icon. Thanks for watching. This is a common one. This is listed at uh, one dollar, and it's that you can pay, you can buy it and pay a dollar for it. Uh, but then he will cancel the order. He says in there, "Not one dollar" in quotes for some reason. Some people actually think it's selling for one dollar. Yeah, because you've listed it for one dollar. I see this all the time on Facebook Marketplace. It drives me crazy. Just put a price in there and sell it for that price. Here's a similar one. This one's a little bit different because you can't buy it for a dollar, but it's listed at a dollar and he says, price is not a dollar, message if interested in. And then somebody actually asks if it's not listed, if you don't want a dollar for it, what's the price you do want? Why not list it at that? And they say, because they want to make sure basically that they don't miss out on any money. That, and that's the game right there. They want people to offer more than what it's really worth. Another subset is the common card issues. Like this one is the Ken Griffey Jr. Bloody Scar card. There is no bloody scar on his arm. It's not worth $75. It's worth one to $2 maybe. It's an incredibly common thing. It looks like there's a little bit of red on his arm and somebody said, oh, that's an error card. It's not really. This is pretty common. Um, and you'll see a bunch of those like that. It's kind of similar to the Jose Uribe error card trend. There is no... Uh, uncommon error card with Jose Uribe, but people try to sell them for thousands and thousands of dollars. This one's for sale for $7,210. And as you can see here, people have apparently bought these for thousands of dollars. There are actually a lot of these that have sold for thousands, even $10,000. Some people claim that it's money laundering. Some people say that it's the seller trying to, to shill the price up somehow. I don't really know what it is. It's just insanity to me. Another one is passing off more modern cards as a rookie card, like this Greg Maddox rookie card. They're, they're actually only trying to sell it for $10, which isn't insane, but this is clearly not a Maddox rookie card. Another common one is people lying about the way that they found cards because they believe, and it's probably true, that if people read an interesting backstory of how cards came about, then they are more likely to buy them. In this case, they say that they tore down their house and found these mint condition rare Mickey Mantles. Now these two mantles are worth a lot of money, but they're not particularly rare and they're certainly not worth uh, $10,000 between them. But uh, I also strongly doubt the backstory here that they found them between some walls after tearing the house down and somehow the cards were still in good condition. If you go to the main Craigslist collectibles for sale, uh, you can always find Patrick trying to sell these very vague, old, but not real old, but older cards. No pictures, no information whatsoever. I really don't know what Patrick is doing. They're always listed just like this. There are literally at least a half dozen of these advertisements out at any given time on the main Craigslist. Another example of the incredibly common cards that are supposedly more rare. So this one, rare, circa 1987, not just 1987 like it is, circa 1987, $12,000. And then here's the same thing, tops, circa 1987, $47,000, same card. And here is uh, circa 1986, Pete Rose, $185,000. These are bonkers. You shouldn't be paying even $1.85 for these Pete Rose cards. This entire ad is really difficult to understand, but he's trying to sell a Scott Patterson minor league card for $40 plus $99 shipping. And he explains that he puts the shipping high so he can use PayPal or Venmo. If you understand what this means, please put it in comments because I don't. 
$1 million for this incredibly common uh, 1982 Donruss Reggie Jackson that is off-center. And also, if you put set break in your uh, advertisement, apparently that helps them sell better, which is probably legit, but I tend to not believe all these set breaks, especially from 1980s cards. I did enjoy this one, though. I saw this as an ad uh, on Facebook of eBay. This is a Michael Jordan one-of-one one NBA card custom art. Uh, I love this. It's clever. It's funny. And they're trying to sell it for 100 bucks. And if they sell it for 100 bucks, good for them. This is clearly not uh, anything special. Somebody drew it and wrote one of one on it as a joke. It's funny. Let me know if you like this video. I've got a lot more of these. I can put out another video. I think about six minutes is the appropriate length for this type of video. So I'm going to leave it here, but just uh, let me know in the comments. Thanks.